Well, ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, it's about that time when a content creator doesn't know what content to make. So he goes to the social media, mainly just Instagram, and asks, ask me some questions. So we've got a couple questions here. We're going to answer them. Sit back, chill. But I know one thing, you're going to ask me about why I'm cosplaying Nelly or someone at this point, and I lost a fight with a razor while shaving. Like I'm 12, just learning how to shave again. So that's question number one answered. So one of the first questions I got, and once again, it's a very good question because of the times that we've been in for over the past year, year and a half now, almost two years. And it's how have I challenged myself to stay creative in the past years, like I just mentioned, because this person had found themselves really burnt out, not sure what to do, lack of creativity, etc. So how have I challenged myself over the past, you know, year or so. Well, I'm in your same boat, actually. Um, I really haven't traveled anywhere. I haven't uh, done a lot of photography. I really haven't sh shot much. If anything, I've sold a camera. So I really haven't been shooting much, <sighs> as much as I want to an extent. But, you know, things are changing now evolve. But one of the biggest things, you know, and it's been a struggle for content for, you know, what, what videos to make because gear is absolutely boring right now for the most part. And it's just not fun to talk about 100% of the time, but you, you try and have fun with it if something sticks out to you. But one of the things I've always wanted to do, and this is now as of November of last year, I wanted to learn all about streaming. So the one creative thing that I really did was dove in and like all back there, like there's my gaming monitor, I use a PlayStation, that's my key light for my webcam, etc. I learned how to stream. That's your OBS, your streaming software. I stream on Twitch. I, you know, I do uh, card stuff like Pokemon cards. That's something fun that I wanted to pick back up ever since I was a kid. And I play games like Apex and stuff uh, on stream. So that's probably one of the biggest things that I wanted to accomplish. And I learned so much, and especially with the times right now, streaming is it as much as you want to deny it or not streaming is what it, you know it's, it's a big thing and i think it's very important to learn and there is a lot that goes into it you don't just sit down and go live if you want to have any kind of effort into it and uh, you get these stream decks that you can set up like special scenes and trigger sound all this kind of stuff very exciting for me to, to challenge me creatively because it is not easy so that's one of the things that i do I challenge myself creatively. Maybe you want to try painting or drawing or streaming or or something. That's what you could do besides just photography. You could get out of the rut, try something else, but still appreciate love photography. So I wanted to learn about streaming and I did. And, I'm, and I think I'm relatively set up very, very well. And if you guys or girls want a video on anything about that, I'd be willing to make it because there's a lot to learn. And I think I can help out um, if people want to learn. You know, this isn't just necessarily a photography channel. I used to do it different videos in the past, but I think it's something really cool and it's something to the times. Next question I got is what kind of tripods do I recommend? You know, what kind of style, what kind of, what type? And, you know, for doing landscapes or basically kind of any kind of shooting, what do I recommend? So one of the worst things I think you could do, especially when you're just starting out, is buying a cheap tripod. Uh, especially when you're doing your if you're going to classes for this kind of stuff, and even if you're just learning, buying a cheap plastic tripod, in my opinion, and I'm not one to say that you have to go spend hundreds upon thousands of dollars on gear, because I don't believe in that, especially the lenses and cameras starting out, but a solid tripod under $200 can really last you, A, a very long time. It is, it'll last you for a variety of genres and subjects. And I just think it's one of the staple things that you can have for a long time if you can get a decent one. So I say look into investing more into that than gear, especially at the front, because a good tripod can last you a long time. There are certain questions you have to ask. What kind of sizes that you want? Because they all, some fold up, some don't. But you know, they stand at different sizes. Some are more desktop level, where they're like this big. Some, you know, are six feet tall. Some even go a bit higher. So you wanna look for ones that probably go about your height, six feet, because that way you can use them, you know, from the ground up to your height. Those are more common. Brands, I mean, you can be pretty brand agnostic at this point. Um, I've used Manfrotto for a lot of my life, but I've been a big fan, and none of this is sponsored or, or anything in any way. I'm not sponsored. 
no hashtag ad, but I love me photo stuff. Um, and mainly because I like their carbon fiber ones. So that's the other aspect, what height and the type that you want. So do you want plastic? No, I say stay away from that. Um, you could get aluminum, which aluminum is very good. Um, it does decent, you know, on the weight, but carbon fiber, you could still find at a good price, even though it's a little bit more expensive, but it's lighter and, but it's very reliable in my opinion. So aluminum or carbon fiber, all depending on what price point you find it. The other thing that I say is what kind of, uh, connectors you have to extend the legs. There's usually clamps and there's twist ties. I've had horrible times with the clamps. I've, I've, it's been very unreliable and I just haven't had a good time with them. Um, so I like the, the, the twist locks and plus when you can do them all at once and unlock it, it's really cool and you look pretty awesome on a set. The only thing past that is what kind of ball head do you want to use to hold your camera? Uh, you could use a ball head, you know, something more or less for video. You, you know, there's a pistol grip type of one. So once again, all depending on whatever you want, there's some that you can, especially the ball heads, there's usually a little loop. You can aim the camera straight down. There's a lot of versatility out there. It's really just what you want to do and use, but definitely get something that has a level on it. So you can see if it's level or not. Some cameras do have built-in levels, so you can check those as well. But all that being said, I use a Mi Photo. I forget the exact one, but it's about six feet tall, so it's about my height. I don't know if it's the backpacker or the road tripper at this point anymore, um, but it's on a ball head just because I like the versatility of it, and that's what I use. So hopefully that little bit of info can help you out. Funny, a lot of these questions are kind of coming from, you know, trying to figure out what to do since not a lot of people are traveling and stuff. And one of the ones is, hey, Eric, what is your favorite film cameras? And that can include anything instant. I really like the Canon A1, but what do you like to shoot and, you know, for fun or professionally? So I've even made a video recently in the past couple of months on this, but I do like more instant style film. I don't really do a lot of actual film, 35 millimeter or anything like that. But I do love my Polaroid SX70 and the Goose, the Polaroid 600 SE. If you look at the name together, it kind of spells a goose. But these are some of my favorite cameras, film cameras of all time. And they're very fun to use. It's just the film, especially for this guy, isn't cheap anymore. But the question I got is, what, what is one lens I would use if I could only use one lens forever, the rest of my entire life, every other lens would burn if I only chose this lens what would I use no, no, no matter the situation or world, whatever. And a lot of people might kind of freeze up on this because there are so many options and there are a ton of options that are still coming out. It's really oversaturating the lens market right now, but I can easily say a 24 to 105 F4. I've had a video talking about why I like shooting F4 in the past where people just read the title and don't actually listen to it. And when they do, they understand. Um, so F4 to me, is a perfect standpoint that you could shoot in basically any situation, especially with the, the, the way you could just massively raise the ISO in these cameras. It almost doesn't matter at this point, but 24 to 105, you can basically shoot anything that you want. So pretty easy answer for me, but how about you in the comments? What is one lens you would love to use if you could only use once for the rest of your life? One of the last ones I could tell is from someone who's a bit bitter maybe, or maybe they just clearly don't understand or maybe want to understand, but why is street photography so damn boring? I think that if you're being serious, so I'll answer this, um, if you're not being serious, you're boring. If you are being serious, well, I'll answer very seriously. You don't like it. That's it, that's why it's boring. There are a lot of people out there that do like it. And we look at, you know, superstars of today, like, like Joshua Jackson and Craig Whitehood, uh, you know, everyone that, you know, six street under that, that, that we follow now, even the saw lighters and, and everyone from the past, there's just something to the candid nature of things, true candid nature, a day in the life, that capture of something going on in a true, true moment. It's hard to describe, but when you see it, you're just like, Damn, and even if it's just the right lighting with the silhouette with a nice red neon sign or something, you could tell a lot of effort went in for that person to grab the eye, to, for that to grab the photographer's eye, to capture that, to set it up that way, to wait in that spot for 10 minutes to an hour, 
shooting at the same spot, waiting for the sun to come over to create different kind of shadows and some kind of different something in the area to see that pattern go across the wall. You know, there, there's a whole hell of a lot that goes into street photography. And once again, I, I took, you know, I preached about workshops before, but ones you gotta look out for and trust. I took a workshop with Joshua Jackson and Craig and seeing how they work blows my mind. And this is just them casually doing it for fun. Whereas to me, especially at the time, a couple years ago when, when I attended this thing, you know, I liked seeing what I saw and I had some glimpses of some stuff, but even just, just, just the pure quick attention to detail that they see that these great photographers can pick out is what makes this stuff amazing. So there is a lot. It is not boring. You're just not into it if you think it's boring. The attention to detail, everything out there essentially, if you could capture creatively, just comes off very, very well. Put it this way. If you like street photography, you like street photography. If you don't, you don't. Now, the one thing I think that is boring about street photography are street portraits and ones that are set up like, hey, can I take a photo of you? You know, set up. It's out of the candid moments. I like moments, the people walking by, the shadow gracing by. But the kind of photos are boring to me. You can have fun with them. You can capture great moments, but they're not real street photography moments to me. They're actual candid moments you catch at a time, candidly, in more or less my opinion. And sometimes you don't even need uh, people in photos, but sometimes that one person in the edge of the frame walking by adds to it than just a empty vessel of a street with cool lights. Something helps it. So if you're not into it, you're not into it. It doesn't make street photography boring. You're just not into it. Street photography is a whole hell of a lot of fun. It gets you out there. It gets you to shoot. And you can capture some really, really impressive stuff. And one of the things that I learned is that the stuff you capture today, people walking around with the AirPods, your phones, that didn't happen 30 years ago. What, 30 years ago, there was Walkmans. You had the horrible metal CD uh, headphones. You had flip phones. They were car phones at one point, okay? Stuff changes. The things people wear, the things people do. Back in the day, people wore suits on the street. It's a tell of the times. I know this drug out a little bit, but I really enjoy street photography, and I think it tells the history of time. It really does. But it's not boring. You may need to just open your mindset up to it a little bit and look at different photographers or different work. Stop just looking on Instagram. Do some research. I got some videos on street photographers. Check those out too. Maybe that'll inspire you a little bit. But street photography is not boring. I think it's very well needed. Even if you don't do it. Respect the art. That's all I got today. I know the video is a bit long, but I want to do a Q&A just because I've got nothing else to think of. So I'm going to go see if I can do round two against the razor. We'll tackle that. But that being said, any questions or comments, leave those down below. If any of the questions that we talked about, 100%, feel free to discuss them in the comments. I read the comments. I look at them. So, hey, we can have a discussion there as well. As always, everyone, go out there, be safe, be smart, use common sense.